when you were doing that first business, what were the, and even the initial fears and then 21,000, that sounds more, it was kind of side hustle-y. I'm more of the belief in every area of life that everything is more nurture. Cause it's hard for me to say what I was born with naturally. Cause when I was one, I didn't, I wasn't conscious of what I did. Right. What is up, everybody? Today, we've got Antonio on Scorch the Fears. We are on episode 91. It is kind of ridiculous how long we've been doing this now or how long I feel I've been doing this every single week. It's great having a podcast. Great having you on. Antonio, welcome to Scorch the Fears. And yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. That was a sick intro. I love that. <laughs> I got hyped. Yeah, no. Let's go. Let's scorch the fears. Yeah, that's what we're here to do. We're here to scorch the fears, get a little hyped, get it, get it going, right? So... Thank you. So my man, real quick for my audience that doesn't know you, just really real quick, just introduce yourself, what you do in real estate, what you do in entrepreneurship, all that for everyone who doesn't know you. Yeah. I'm a content creator, real estate investor. My content is about helping beginner real estate investors who don't know where to start buy their first rental property with a step-by-step -step process. I am trying to help the person that was me at one point in time. And so I, in terms of entrepreneurship generally, obviously real estate investor, obviously I'm doing social media stuff. In the past, I had a Amazon FBA business that failed, that didn't do well. So that caused my fears to be a little bit higher, which maybe we'll get into later. But yeah, that's it really. Just trying to build my businesses now as we speak. And as I'm doing that, I'm talking about it on social media and trying to help others along the way. I love it. So talk about your Amazon business for a second. I'm curious what, because that was your first entrepreneurial journey. And I definitely know having an entrepreneurial journey, I've had enough people on this podcast now, where if you had an entrepreneurial journey and it didn't work out, why do you think it didn't work out? What happened there? Well, there's the numbers reason why it didn't work out. And then there's the underlying reasons why it didn't work out. The numbers reasons why, well, we were setting, uh, selling, excuse me, Amazon cutting boards, cutting boards on Amazon, bamboo cutting boards to be spe uh, specific. And uh, we started selling some boards. I quit my software engineering job at the time. I was like, this is going to be amazing. I had a partner doing it and my job was to run ads. And I was so focused on just getting to the first page on Amazon. I was, we're going to be rich if we hit the first page on Amazon that I didn't have any basic business fundamentals of, oh. I need to make more money than I'm putting in. So I was actually bidding high on every keyword to get into page one through the rankings and stuff that I was actually losing money per board. I, I did not keep track of everything that was going on. So that's the financial reason why. And we ended up losing around $21,000, I think was our total invested between me and my partner. The, the underlying reasons why were... One, I didn't have any business sense whatsoever. I just was a software engineer. I didn't even know what entrepreneurship was a year before that. I quit my job prematurely, so I didn't have income to weather out the storm. I, my partner had gone away to on a vacation and basically stopped replying. So I kind of was left on my own. And yeah, so we had partner issues. We had financing issues. We had lack of business fundamental issues. And because of that, we failed. Gotcha. Understood. It makes sense. So when you, so again, all, the reason why this podcast exists, I told you, I was telling you this beforehand, it's to get over the fears that we're dealing with as entrepreneurs, right? Mm -hmm. So I really want to get into especially just with the first business. I know it's not real estate investing, but your first business is always that one where there's a lot of fears. And so when you were doing that first business, what were the, and even the initial fears? And then 21,000, that sounds more, it was kind of side hustle-y. It's not, I mean, I don't know. I've heard people lose hundreds of thousands, right? Yeah. So it wasn't the worst thing in the world, but I guess, how'd you push through that? That's really what I want to know. I want to know how you push through that business not working out and be like, no, I'm going to do entrepreneurship again. Cause most people would quit. That's yeah. what most people would do. So how'd you push through? How'd you not quit? 
Well, I was 22 at the time. So 22, 23, you know, that's a lot of money for me to lose when I was 22, 23. That was more money than I ever had. So for me, it felt a lot worse than maybe I'm, I'm making it seem. But I, I can, the reason why I, I pushed through and I'm still doing it today is because I realized that the alternative isn't a long-term option for the type of person I am. I care about control. I care about freedom so much that for me to throw in the towel because I lost one time felt kind of pointless. You know, it felt like there was no point to doing that because I knew that the alternative of having the nine to five or not, or being locked into the nine to five didn't feel congruent to me and who I was. And so I never once in that moment was I, I'm never going to do this again. It was more, okay, I learned a lot. Now I'm scared to do it again, but I know I need to do it again. And so it was really pushing. It took a lot, but pushing through that fear was more based on the positive outcome rather than the, and, and the lack of, of not wanting to do the negative thing of, of staying in the job. Right. No, I mean, it makes sense, right? There are certain people who are just born with it who are, dude, I cannot do a nine to five. It's just not going to work out for me. It's just not going to happen. How did you know you, I mean, I bet you, you might just be exactly me where it's, I just know that a nine to five isn't going to work for me, mm -hmm. but is it something you just know? Is it something you cultivate? What do you think? Do you think it's a nature or a nurture type of thing? I'm more of the belief in every area of life that everything is more nurture because it's hard for me to say what I was born with naturally because when I was one, I didn't, I wasn't conscious of what I did, right? Or what I naturally believed at that time. So I got to say it's more nurture. My parents were very controlling, very controlling immigrant Italian family. Didn't let me watch certain movies and stuff like that. And they did it with good intentions, you know, to allow me to be you know, straight and level-headed, but that lack of freedom that I had there probably is what's manifesting in my everyday of just trying to get control and freedom of my life. Right. It makes sense. And then do you feel, how, how can somebody make an environment that would make them become an entrepreneur? I don't know if that makes sense. What, how can you simulate an environment that will make you successful in entrepreneurship? I don't even know if that's a fair question. I don't even know if that's possible, but mm -hmm. it's something that I think about a lot is like, okay, so many people say they want to be entrepreneurs, but I, in my head, at least my personal belief is there has to be two things. One is there has to be something chasing you, right? A demon behind you, something mm -hmm. I'm going to be poor. It's not going to work out. Something that gives you anxiety a little bit. And then something in front of you, the goal of freedom, all of that type of stuff. I don't know. I'm curious. What's your beliefs on it? Do you think it's possible to simulate an environment or put yourself in an environment as a new entrepreneur to be successful? I know I had my own things too when I was growing up that made it where I would just be probably become an entrepreneur or at the very least do something that wasn't a nine to five. Mm -hmm. But do you think that can be simulated? Is it? And if so, how would you Maybe how would you change your environment if possible to become a successful entrepreneur? I know that was a lot, but if you can try to answer No, that. it makes sense. I think I, not successfully, but I, I kind of ended up doing this because it was what I needed to do. I didn't have any role models of successful entrepreneurs. Everyone in my family, for the most part, was people who worked a self-employed business. So it was just them and one other person. My uncle is a truck owns a truck driving business. My other uncle owns a solar panel business. My dad is a contractor. He's one employee. My other uncle has a, a barber shop business. They all were entrepreneurs, but they were all this solo entrepreneur. So but I wasn't even aware that they were entrepreneurs. My entire life I was just nurtured to be an engineer, software engineer. So I went to school without that we'll call it environment. And then I basically ended up building that environment through YouTube, mostly YouTube. I would watch Patrick Bet David from Valuetainment 24 seven, John Sanmez from Bulldog Mindset 24 seven. I would basically just be absorbing. I watch Alpha M, you know, a couple uh, Antonio Centeno. These, these entrepreneurs at the time for me were the only thing I could latch onto. And so I had those and I set up a virtual environment from them. 
And then I tried to seek out the people in my life that leaned more in that direction. So I had a couple of friends from college that were like, yeah, I want to do something. It turns out that most of them aren't actually doing something like you said, but the couple that did, I still, I still talk to them a lot and we, we work together a lot to try to get towards goals and stuff like that, because I think it was important to have the in-person connection. I would go to meetups as well to try to meet new people, but it, I'm not going to lie. It's hard uh, to have those virtual and in-person things try to influence you. It takes a lot of time. It took a couple of years before I was really starting to quote, quote unquote, brainwash myself to believe in that this was the right path for me. Gotcha. Talk about that a little bit. What do you mean it took you a couple of years to brainwash you that it was the right path? What were you saying to yourself that made you feel like it might not be the right path? Yeah. It, well, one, it was, it was a little bit easier to brainwash myself at that time because I had never really made a lot of money and my first software engineering job was cool. I was making money, but I, I wasn't worried about necessarily losing the paycheck. So the first time around was okay. But then the second time around after I quit that job and I tried to do the Amazon FBA business, those fears and worries took a little bit more to overcome because, you know, I was, what if I quit my job again? And I try to go all in on this thing and I fail again. Then I set myself back. I set my investing back. What am I supposed to do? Or I've been talking about on social media about buying properties and stuff like that. But what if I run out of money and I can't buy properties, right? That, that's just another fear that I had. And so I kind of had to build a worst case scenario for myself where I was, okay, if I can get my business to making X dollars a month and I save up this, men, this many dollars and I have this much for my rental properties and I have this retirement account and I have all of these insurance policies basically to make sure that nothing goes wrong. I waited till I had a certain amount of followers on social media too. I was just, okay, if I had all these things, when is it going to be enough? And so that was kind of, I needed the outer world things to make myself feel comfortable before jumping in the second time. So when is it enough? Because I feel it's almost never enough, right? You have to get, I mean, there's a point I don't know. I've gotten to my, I've gotten to the point where my business makes 60 to hundred K a month. Some, and some months I've even had 200 K. Right. But I'm curious when, what is enough? Cause I'm curious. Cause I remember telling myself, I can get it to where there's 50 K a month, then I should be set. Right. Mm -hmm. But what, what do you feel? Is there a number? I'm curious if it actually ever goes away. I don't know. I may not, I just might not have hit the number yet, but it, mm -hmm. and maybe there, there probably is. I mean, a billion dollars. Yeah. That's the freaking number. Uh, definitely. Right. But I'm curious is what is the number where it's, it goes away? Yeah. I don't think it's a number. I think it's a perception. If I was living in Italy and I only needed $4,000 a month to survive, 10,000 is probably great. And as long as I convince myself that 10,000 is okay, and I don't really need more, then it's fine. But if I live in America and everyone else around me is making 10,000, that's the floor. And then 20,000 might feel better. Then you have all these role models of people making seven figures a month and you're like, well, I need to keep going. So it really depends on who you look at and what your perception is of what is good and what is not good. Right. So basically you're saying it's just, you should figure out how much you need to survive and then be okay. I should be double that and then I'm and then I'm good. And then I guess my what I'm trying to get at, because I think even the how do you change your perception? That's really what I'm trying to say is how do you make that perception switch? Because you could be you could still be living in Italy, 4000 a month is all you need and making 10,000 and still feeling that stress, still feeling that money anxiety. So how how do you actually change the perception? Yeah, the way I'm trying to change my perception is focus more on the wins that I have and being somewhat grateful for them. Because I I think I I lean more towards the opposite direction of I did something great and I then I don't feel good about it. I'm, oh, I just need the next thing. I need the next thing. So I'm more in that direction. So for me, I'm trying to do the opposite and stop and appreciate, like, wow, I hit 650,000 followers or I, you know, made... $10,000 this month. That's great. You know? And so I, I'm trying to reprogram myself by instead of doing the thing that was, all right, now I need to go to the next level is just kind of sitting at the level and being like, you did this good job. 
pat yourself on the back, go get some sushi, do, you know, do, do something you enjoy, that kind of thing. I love it. I love it so much. That's the truth, right? I think gratefulness is one of the best ways to do it. That's what you're talking about. That's the best way to get rid of fear. I think it's if you're truly guys, if you're truly in a state of gratefulness, you can't be afraid. It's actually impossible to be afraid while being grateful. And that's what Antonio's getting at. So yeah, I just I 100% agree. That's one of the best perception shifts ever. So I want to get into your story a little bit. We're doing Amazon. Amazon doesn't work out. You're like, damn, I've had a failed business. How how do you hear about real estate? How'd you get into it? So uh, I got to take a step back because day one of my software engineering job was when I found out that what entrepreneurship was. And that led me down to a bunch of rabbit holes. And one of them was real estate. So I had started learning about real estate at the same time I was learning about Amazon FBA, but I started doing the Amazon FBA because that felt more doable. I was like, I can't buy a house. I'm 22. You know, no way, no way I could afford that. Right. So I, well, I could have, I just didn't know the techniques and stuff to pull it off. So I was reading about real estate and actually the house that I was living in was a rental property. And I had actually just emailed the owner and asked them if they would be open to selling. But the owner was honestly, I would have to sell it to you at this price and it's not going to cash flow at this price. And I was like, oh, okay. That makes sense. So I didn't do anything at that point in time. So real estate was always there. Plus my dad's a contractor and he always talked about, you know, when you grow up and you make some money, then you know, let's, let's, you know, do something together. He kind of hinted at that for a while. So I had some ideas of it, but I didn't really have any role models or anyone to do it. So I had to build the same thing in real estate with books and online resources. So bigger pockets, a millionaire real estate investor. It's up there on the shelf. A few other books, ABCs of real estate investing, Ken McElroy. And anyway, I just started absorbing as much as I possibly could. And that was happening for a while. You know, that kept happening. Plenty of time after the Amazon business failed. It took four years, basically, from the day I started learning about real estate to the day I actually did it because I had so much fear around real estate investing itself. Uh, I was 26 when I actually started, but all that time when I wanted to start, I was scared that if I bought something that I would lose all of my money because I made a mistake. And I didn't want to do that. And that was my entire life savings. You know, I've been working for four years. I already lost half of my life savings on Amazon. Now I don't want to lose the rest of my life savings and my future on, on real estate. So yeah, it was mostly about losing my life savings and being confused and overwhelmed with what's the right move. How do I do this? That kind of thing. So, and then was it that perception sh shift we were talking about earlier? Was that how you were like, screw it? I'm going to just do real estate again, even though the Amazon stuff didn't work out or what do you feel pushed you through it? Again, it was the same thing of, well, just because Amazon didn't work for me, doesn't mean that this isn't going to work for me. This has worked for so many people. You know, okay. this has been working for a long period of time. Amazon FBA is a new thing. And so at that time it was at least Oops. so. Yeah. All good. I was just, yeah, that's basically it is. I was just, you know, trying to convince myself like, people that are a lot dumber than you have done this, you know, you could figure this out. You're a software engineer. That's true. I mean, honestly, 19 year old is there are 19 year olds figuring this out. Me at 25. That's when I started and figure this out. You know, there's gotta be a way that I'm going to be able to make money in this. Right. Mm -hmm. So it totally makes sense. And then so tell everybody what, what strategies were you using in real estate? How did you start off in it? Like, was it just buy and hold? What was your, what was the path you went down? Yeah. To reduce my fears as much as possible. I took the most traditional route. <laughs> I bought a property. I bought a triplex. It was 195,000 and just regular old buy and hold. I was fixing things up is way too out of my comfort zone. I don't know how to do anything. I was painting walls and stuff like that. I, I didn't even know how to paint the wall or anything like that. I just yeah. learned how to do that like two years ago. So <laughs> for me, anything fixing up was too many headaches. So I had to do stuff that was within my control. So buy and hold small multifamily seemed to work from a cash flow perspective better than single family. So I stuck with that. What, what, what market are you in? Huh. 
That's a funny story. So I started off in New Jersey, in Ewing, New Jersey, because it was commutable, and that's where I went to school. So, and that's actually where I lived one year, the one year I was working right outside of college. But at this point, I'm living in New York City, so it wasn't necessarily close. But it was, it was close enough at a low enough price point and a good enough rent price for me to get started. So I bought my first three there, and then when I started making videos about it, I was always interested. I had a friend that was investing in Memphis from Oakland, California, and he had never been to Memphis. And I was really interested in it. I was, you know what? I think I'm going to try to do this out of state stuff. And so I moved to Texas in 2021 and at the beginning of 2021. And along the way, I drove my car down and I stopped at all these different real estate markets. I went to Memphis, I went to Ohio, I went to Indiana. And so I ended up buying a couple properties along the way, one in Arkansas, one in Ohio. And then I ended up continuing to buy some in in Ohio. And then I ended up getting one in Florida. So I'm in Cape Coral, Florida, Ewing, New Jersey, Akron, Ohio, and Little Rock, Arkansas. Oh, I only have eight properties, but it's split across all all four of those markets. So that, that was a, I shot myself in the foot, but I did it because I was interested in this topic and I kind of led with my, my content leading me towards my investing, which has its pros and cons. No, I love it. And then talk to me a little bit about the initial challenges with that, right? I mean, I mainly wholesale, but I've owned some single family rentals and Mm -hmm. they it's, there are challenges with it, right? So what were your initial challenges what would you recommend to somebody who's trying to own more rentals? How would you get started? How would you get started if you're, I don't know, you had a software engineering job. Are you, do you still have that job so you can get loans from banks and stuff? No, no. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm Good full-time idea. content and and social media but, and, and real estate, I was just saying. And real um, estate. Yeah. So what would you think, what would you recommend to somebody to how they would get started in buying rentals? How, how should they start? What should they start doing? Yeah, the easiest way is to have uh, a W-2 job, make some money, save some money, and house hack your first property. That's the easiest way because likely you're spending, if if you live in a market where the price to rent ratio is decent, then house hacking is probably going to be good. Otherwise, I would pick a cheaper market out of state, go visit it for a weekend, and buy a property with 20, 25% down, uh, but a cheaper property, no $100,000, $200,000 property, and you know, take a couple of years to save for that and get started that way. The point is, is just to get your feet wet and see yourself through the process. It's not the most efficient way to get started. It's not the most optimized way to get started. But to me, it's the most easy, well, a well-worn down path to get started. And once you can do that, then you can take the next leap. When you're learning uh, a new skill, the most important thing for you to do is to keep the barrier to entry low. And so I'm all about keeping the barrier to entry as low as possible. When you start adding in all these complex things, trying to bury your first property, I think that's just dumb. It's just, it's so complex for a beginner to understand how to calculate ARV and how to calculate cash flow. that is just too much. So don't bother doing that. Just pick one, flip it or buy and hold. Plus you're going to come have to work a lot more for those deals. Anyway, That's my, that's my point is just reduce your barrier to entry. And it's going to be a lot easier to get started that way and reduce your overwhelm along the way as well. I love it. So let's talk about, let's talk about social media a little bit, right? Because I mean, that's how I found you was through your social media. You do a ton of content. How did you, how did you start just doing social media stuff or what inspired you to, you know, get an insane following? Why? It started off in February, 2017. This is after my Amazon business failed and before I got my next job, before I started investing in real estate, my mom and my brother and my sister came home. My brother had gone to the doctor's office from something and my mom came home crying and I was just really confused what was going on. She told me that my brother had been diagnosed with stage four cancer and in the back of my head, because I had been watching all these YouTube people, I was, I need to talk about this stuff. No one my age is talking about this stuff. People need to know life is, has so much to give. And so that day I was, I was scared and nervous about 
doing this because I knew that friends would make fun of me. I didn't know anything about making a video, that kind of thing. So literally that day, I just grabbed my camera and I go outside and I record a video reading from whatever book I was reading at the time, which was 10X Rules by Grant Cardone. You could still watch that video. It's on my old YouTube channel and <laughs> it's so bad, right? But I was, all right, I'm going to get good at this thing and I'm just going to do as much as I can. So I started doing seven to nine videos a week where I just would talk about the chapter that I was reading that day. And for me, it was just about getting the reps in. So I did that all while I was looking for a job. And then when I got my job, I just kept doing that. And as I was doing that, I was learning more about marketing and learning more about this stuff. And I was learning about real estate. So I was doing YouTube and content creation for two years. No one was watching me. And then I realized that while I was going through this process of buying my first property, other people had the same issue as me. I kept going on bigger pockets and people were saying, I want to buy my first rental property, but I don't know where to start. I don't know where to start. I don't know where to start. And I was, man, that's exactly how I feel. I'm reading all these books. They feel really motivational, but I still don't know where to start at the end of all of it. And so I was, I'm going to talk about I'm going to combine the two worlds. I'm doing this real estate thing. I'm doing this thing. And I'm going to combine and talk about how I come up with the things that make me feel that way and make me feel more confident about investing. And so I just combined the two. And so then I did that for about a year on YouTube. And then after doing it for about a year and a half, no, this was about two years on YouTube. And then once I did that for about two years on YouTube, I switched over to TikTok. And I, I was really lucky because... I had been making videos, getting practice in, but then also TikTok was new. There weren't a lot of people on there. So I started making content on TikTok and I started having some success, a lot more success than I was having on YouTube because there weren't that many people on there. And so then I've now taken the success I had on TikTok and tried to replicate it to Instagram. And now I'm trying to expand to other platforms, Facebook and YouTube and, and stuff like that. But yeah, at this point in time, I've made a thousand videos online over the last six and a half years. And it's just been a process of constantly trying to make something better and better every day and trying to help people. Because I, I said, at this point, I'm just trying to help the person that was me and so every video I make is for that person, trying to make things clear, simple, easy to understand, actionable, so this way they can actually get started because I felt everything that I read wasn't that. Right, totally makes sense. Why Why should somebody start doing social media, right? I'm, I think people should know a lot of reasons why people do, should do social media. I think it gets you more deals, it gets you more private money, it helps you do, it helps you get known it brings in more money into your primary business is at least the reason why I'm doing it a lot. And also it helps a lot of people, but is there anything extra to that or any other reasons you feel somebody should start doing social media, especially when they're just starting out? Because there are some people, I know a few people you who started doing it even before they were making money. And they're so grateful now that they started doing it because even when they have the houses they have and the money that they have, it just amplified it. So can you talk a little bit about that? Of what have been the benefits of doing social media? Yeah, to be completely honest, money is not the thing I would say to do social media for, at least in my, my perspective. I'm still making less than I was making as a software engineer through my social media presence. And, you know, I have almost across all platforms, almost 900,000 followers. So it hasn't translated to money to me. Instead, it has more translated to networking. Right. People like, to, to be completely fair, because you cared about me because I had a number next to my name. Otherwise, you would have never heard about me, right? 100%. I've gotten to, I got, I got to speak at a conference last week to real estate agents about growing on social media, but only because I had a number next to my name. But then I, I met a lot of real estate agents that way. I've had CEOs of real estate software companies DM me and say they've been following me for a while. Companies that I've used, right? That it has opened up so many connection doors for me that in a normal world, someone who has eight properties or someone who is just a software engineer would never have those opportunities to, to reach out to but the number next to my name is a big door opener. So I would say it gets my foot in the door more than anything else than a, a financial thing or anything like that, at least from my experience. No, it makes sense. And then 
how has that has that helped you find houses or anything like that or has it just been how because that's pretty cool right i think that is pretty cool i mean you're 100 right that's how i know you as i saw hey man this guy has a ton of followers i really liked his con your content it was pretty spot on pretty good stuff so i was okay why not like I, i'll reach out to him and see if he'd want to come on my podcast right so how how have you been using that those that those networking opportunities have they i'm just curious if there's been yeah what have been what have been the benefits of those that networking from social media yeah i would say getting to meet people that i've dreamt of being friends with people that have been mentors to me that i have watched on the computer for a long period of time now some i have their phone number and i've texted them and i've met up with them and hung out with them so that i would say is the biggest thing i haven't really seen an impact on the real estate side of things yet uh, i am planning on doing some form of trying to work with my audience to be able to buy properties and i think that will that will show the benefit on that end but for in a real estate example, when I go to uh, a, like a real estate meetup in town, almost every single time I'll have someone that has more properties than me or is making more money than me be, hey, I know you, I've seen you. Last one I was at, someone's like, you're TikTok famous. I was like, oh, hi, I'm Antonio, <laughs> you know? And uh, turns out that they have, you know, 10 years more experience than me. And so I get to learn from them. And because they're interested in in the social media and the marketing stuff, it just happens to be what everyone else wants to know or you know have some you know skills around in 2023. Whereas I'm happy to learn from them in other areas of my life as well. I appreciate you so much for coming on. What are your last words before I end this? No, this is great. I'm I'm glad we had this conversation. It was fun, and uh, thanks for having me, Jonah, and all of you. You know, don't let the fears hold you back. That they are, they can be scary. They they might feel you're all alone and the only one having them. But I bet you that we've all been through them to some shape or form or extent. Even no matter how specific your scenario might feel, the flavor of it will still be there for other people. So don't you worry. I love it. Awesome. Thank you, Antonio. I appreciate you. This was Scorch the Fears, episode ninety one. Next week, let me real quick check. I think next week we're gonna be a little bit off let me just make sure i want you guys showing up at the right time next week we are gonna be oh it's gonna be wednesday so it'll be wednesday 5 p.m pst not thursday 5 p.m pst that's when we're gonna do it it's gonna be great thank you guys so much for coming on thank you again antonio you've been amazing this is scorch the fears let's freaking go